it's the first week of May and it's already in the upper 80s. Now obviously if you look at a guy like me, you think I probably need a hat and sunscreen and you definitely be right. But what's a plant going to do? What's a plant going to do? Well stick with me today and I'll show you how you can protect your trees and your plants from sunburn, sunscald, insects and rodents. Let's go. Welcome to Blossom Hill Microgreens where we discuss and demonstrate all things microgreens and other gardening tips to help you have a more successful growing season. I invite you to subscribe and share this video with your friends who appreciate gardening topics. A healthy tree trunk is critical for a, a tree's success. Firstly, it provides stability uh, for the branches and the fruit that it ultimately produces. And secondly, it delivers uh, sugars and nutrients from the soil throughout the plant. The problem is this makes the rootstock and trunk a tasty treat for many bugs and rodents. If only they can penetrate through the bark, which of course with, you know, the younger the tree, the less dense and strong that bark is going to be. There are multiple things uh, that can impact um, the tree's ability to defend itself. First of all, sunburn. Sunburn um, can uh, crack the trunk of the tree and these cracks provide entry points for ants and other insects to burrow throughout the uh, branches and trunk. Of course sometimes that can be isolated but that can ultimately lead to a you know a diseased tree and kill it entirely. Secondly you have winter sun scald. This is when uh, in winter months especially you know as you tend towards spring uh, you know February March uh, you uh, might have nice sunny days that are warm and it kind of fools the plant into thinking spring is here. It might start to blossom early but when, when the night comes and it gets much colder or especially let's say if you have a frosty week uh, you know uh, soon afterwards now the plant gets shocked and that can freeze and that can uh, you know be very damaging to the plant also and uh, and in either case Insects and rodents take advantage to uh, attack these these weaknesses um, to you know eat at the bark and rootstock and ultimately invade the plant. So now that we understand some of the elements that try to undermine our trees and plants' ability to produce a, a nice harvest for us, I'm happy to show you how I protect my trees. Ivy Organics three-in-one plant guard protects against sunburn, winter sun scald, insects, and rodents while maintaining the coveted OMRI listing. All right, so just to get into a couple of details about why this is such a great product, uh, the first thing I wanted to mention um, or go over is the OMRI listing, and that's the Organic Materials Review Institute. And it's a nonprofit organization, and uh, it's really the leading nonprofit organization as far as um, independently reviewing products uh, like uh, fertilizers, uh, pest control, livestock, and other inputs that go into making these types of products. Uh, for example, if you think of the term uh, organic, organic means something when you're talking about like food because there's actually regulatory agencies that make sure that before a product is considered organic it meets certain criteria. The problem is is outside of a uh, food uh, and you know a, a few other limited items it's not regulated so I mean for example on any bag of soil they can say organic they can say healthy they can say it's awesome for the world but it doesn't really mean squat the OMRI listing actually shows that they went through a careful uh, review process uh, to actually uh, make sure that you know it's it's up to par the active ingredients uh, in this are a variety of, of oils. Uh, so it's castor oil, cinnamon oil, clove oil, garlic, peppermint, rosemary, and spearmint. And these oils all have, uh, you know, they're all repellents to different types of, uh, you know, different critters that can get into um, your garden. Uh, and so, 
uh, in particular castor oil uh, is something that you might you know an insect or a rodent uh, might uh, you know take this little nibble of it and then you know it doesn't taste good at all so then it will leave it alone and so but just uh, uh, they specifically list as far as um, the insects that the oils repel uh, aphids ants beetles caterpillars mites snails termites and white flies um, and as far as rodents uh, they specifically mention rats mice rabbits squirrels and voles and so um, you know, as you can see, there's a wide variety of insects and rodents that it repels. Uh, it also, uh, and the major uh, inert ingredient in this is diatomaceous earth, um, and this um, also helps uh, the oils absorb into the bark, and it's also a um, repellent. Um, it's uh, uh, diatomaceous earth is a it's called an anthropocide, uh, which just means it you know, kills anthropods. And so uh, what are anthropods? Uh, they're the types of insects that have an exoskeleton and segmented bodies. So things like spiders, aphids, uh, scorpions, um, potato bugs, things like that. And uh, what happens is it, it gets into underneath their exoskeleton, irritates them, and uh, then it typically leads from them either getting burnt from the sun or dehydrated or lacking some of their protective features and so you know predators are able to uh, get at them um, easier uh, now uh, it comes you know everything that's needed comes in in the can uh, it's a little package of powder and an oil a vial and you just mix that uh, with water uh, to basically just create like a diluted paint um, you can use the mixture at least the, the proportions as you desire so if you only think you're going to need to use half of a can then you can save the other half you can dilute it even further into a spray bottle and use it for as a foliar spray so there's some nice variety in in the different applications so if you have trees you think would benefit from this product please post them in the comments and i'd be curious to see what you're considering all right, so these are a few trees that I recently purchased from a neighborhood nursery. Uh, the two larger ones here on my right are avocados, and the two left are lemon varieties. And one of the first things I noticed is uh, that the trees are staked um, to these uh, you know, stakes. And in my case, these are wooden ones, uh, which are better than the alternative, but uh, they are still... You know, when they're staked like this, they're staked for shipping purposes. And if we were to leave them uh, on the trees permanently, it could create a situation where uh, the tree is uh, utilizing the stake as a crutch, and that is something that we don't want. We want the tree to grow up strong and healthy, and that requires us to uh, release these tags and then stake it uh, more loosely uh, from uh, a little bit, you know, from let's say three or four inches away uh, and not as tight. Also be careful uh, that some of them can be staked with uh, metal rods, for example, which can get very hot and in fact could create sunburn just in, uh, you know, of the heat that they absorb themselves. Uh, so the first thing I'm doing here is I'm uh, cutting these uh, tags away and uh, once we're able to you know, untag them, the, you know, take the stake out, and then we can get through the other parts of the process. And later on, uh, then we can uh, restake it. Um, and, and you know, the key there is to just uh, do it uh, loosely enough that it can provide some support during, for example, windy conditions, but not enough that it, you know, actually weakens its longevity. And one thing I would definitely highlight here is you, know, you want to do your best to try and avoid the root ball when you do uh, stake the tree. So in this case, uh, these were replanted um, from five-gallon containers into these larger containers that I have here. So I knew roughly where um, you know where the root ball was. So now what we want to keep in mind is we want the tree to grow tall, and so what that means is since we want the tree to grow tall and the energy to go, uh, we want to get rid of some of these lower branches uh, that would otherwise take nutrients uh, from the tree in the ground. And so firstly when I'm looking at uh, the branches that I'm going to cut, it's important to cut as close as you can to uh, the rootstock. And 
Uh, that is simply because if you cut it short like this, you leave a greater potential uh, for uh, it to uh, be attacked from, you know, bugs and other critters, you know, and you also have some potential other issues. So you want to cut it as close as you can, and that will make it easier to seal too. And that's one of the great reasons uh, I'm doing this now before I apply the 3-in-1 tree guard, uh, because it'll act as, as a seal uh, against this uh, pruning, just as if, you know, any other uh, tree damage that happens. So I'm just going through and cutting some other shorter branches here, and this one's pretty much wrapped up. And just to show you on uh, my lemon tree here, uh, you'll see, I mean, this was done by either the wholesaler or by the nursery. And so uh, this branch was clearly trimmed, but it was trimmed, you know, I mean, well away from the stock. And so uh, that's just a potential trouble. So we'll trim that off. And now we can proceed to go to the actual demonstration of the 3-in-1 paint guard. Now this process generally has actually been used for generations called whitewashing by agriculture to protect their orchards. They used uh, to use standard uh, latex paint, but many orchards, especially organic ones, uh, realize that they cannot have an organic farm if, uh, you know, they're leaving paint shavings all over uh, the forest, you know, all over the garden floor or the orchard floor. And after all, you know, over time, paint will chip and peel off as the trunk grows or weather conditions break it down over time. And you have to ask, you know, would you rather have paint remnants going into your soil or organic nutrients and minerals? Also, uh, one important uh, distinction between using this 3-in-1 plant guard and a traditional paint which might be used in the same practice is that uh, the 3-in-1 plant guard dries on porous and allows uh, nutrients and moisture uh, to get through versus something like latex paint which can, you know can actually retard that process so um, that's another reason why this product is quite beneficial. This 3-in-1 paint guard uh, is uh, you know comes in a powder along with a vial of, of oils uh, that we discussed previously. And, uh, and then you add it with water to create this, um, you know, it's, it's, you know and it's like a diluted paint. Uh, you can further uh, use it to uh, create a foliar spray, and there's easy directions in there too. But that's nice because not only can you use it on the uh, rootstocks and the trunks, but you can also further use it on uh, the leaves and branches to further protect uh, your plants and trees from the same uh, sun uh, burn, sun scald, and rodents and insects. Uh, so at this time, I'm just applying it up uh, and down the rootstock. You can see it just paints on rather well. If you have a, a younger tree, uh, it you know, may need a second coat, uh, but you know, I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to get a good coat uh, with this, or uh, you know, get good coverage with this first coat. And uh, so you just, you know, you just paint it on. Uh, you know, use any brush. Um, you know, real simple process. And you can see it, it going on. Uh, also, it, you know, it easily goes over um, like the pruning uh, marks that we made. And you can see just little by little. Uh, we're starting to uh, cover it. Now, Ivy Organics does make a green and a brown version, so there is some flexibility if you want it to, you know, if you want it to look green uh, or brown. I've chosen the white version because that's the only variety that contains the diatomaceous earth, um, but, you know, that's definitely something that you can consider if you want your plants to, for example, maintain like their green kind of natural looking stock. And you can see here from top to bottom we have really nice coverage and this is only with a single coat and about 10 minutes of drying time. Now you'll see that I've protected the other three trees as well. On this Jim Bacon avocado tree you'll see I've also covered the top of the seed uh, which is something that you're certainly welcome to do. One uh, sort of inside baseball uh, trick on this product also, if you got bulbs and you've got issues with rodents and gophers and those types going after your bulbs, uh, roll a half a dozen 
of uh, them in like a plastic bag with this 3-in-1 plant guard to put them in the ground, you won't have any problem because those rodents won't have any part of your bulbs anymore. If you found this episode helpful, uh, please click the like button. And if not, please sarcastically click the like button. For more gardening videos like this, subscribe and click the notification bell so you'll be informed when new content premieres. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch. I appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.